This is the image that most people think about when they think about what a scientist looks like. The lab coat, the thick safety glasses, and that crazy Albert Einstein here. Why? Why can't it be like this? Yeah. <laughs> Us bald people can be scientists too, yeah? Yeah. I am a scientist. I have a science degree. I have 20 years practical and theoretical experience in science. Therefore, I am a scientist. That's how the world would label me. But I haven't always wanted to be a scientist. Back in high school, I wanted to be an artist. Using my imagination and being creative with drawing, sculpting, and painting. I loved it. But unfortunately, I wasn't that good at it. So my teachers advised me out of the arts and into a science career. Now, I entered university and finished a degree in gardening. I know, gardening is a science. But I also like to think of it as an art. I majored in all things grape growing and winemaking and ended up working in a vineyard down in the southwest. Life was great. But something never left me, and that was that need for me to feed my more creative side. So I started thinking, can I be a bit more creative with what I'm working with in the vineyard and in the winery? I also thought that I'd solve a world problem. Just one. Only in the weekends, just spare time. I want you to have a look down at what you're wearing today. Cotton, wool, polyesters. And I want you to think about the environmental impacts that are happening around the world due to what you're wearing. And I also want you to think about how much water goes in to the production of what you're wearing. I start thinking, is there a smarter way of doing this? Can I make clothing without creating more problems. Is it a problem? I hear you ask. Well, let me show you. This is the Aral Sea. It shares a border between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. It was the fourth largest freshwater sea in the world. Was. With irrigation of agriculture, mainly cotton, in that region, this is now what's left. It takes 10,000 litres of fresh water to make one pair of cotton denim jeans. And you may well think, it doesn't matter. It's somebody else's backyard, it's somebody else's problem. We grow cotton here in Australia. Cotton is one of the thirstiest plants in the world. We flood the crop. We open up the dams, we open up the river, now, many places down that river system, this is what it looks like. I don't want to live in a world that looks like this. So therefore, this is what I'm going to do about it. I want to take you back to my days back in the vineyard. We made a mistake. Actually, truth be known, I made the mistake. I forgot to add carbon dioxide to the, to the vat, a crucial ingredient in winemaking, and to stop any bacterial infections. A bacteria called Acetobacter got in and converted my wine to vinegar. Oops. After throwing that vat of 5,000 litres of wine out in disgust, I noticed that there was a thin layer of material had formed on the top of the vat, which I also threw out in disgust. It wasn't until years later that I was researching future fabrics that I started to wonder, what was that material made from? And it really didn't take me that long to realise that it was made from a cotton-like substance. That's right. Years earlier, the Acetobacter, shown here, had drunk my wine, had converted it into vinegar, and spun me out these fibres of cotton. Can you imagine it being like a silkworm spinning out silk fibres? But in this case, it's a microscopic bacteria that are spinning out cotton-like fibres. Light bulb moment. I thought, if it's cotton-like fibres, why can't we make dresses from it? 
Here's our first dress worn by Janika from the bacterial fermentation of red wine. And we left the smell of vinegar in there because we wanted to challenge you on what you would be willing to put up with if this is more environmentally friendly. Here's my lab. I know, you can notice that we only use the best Aussie Chateau cardboard for the fermentation process. <laughs> we put a thin layer of wine into the white tubs. We inoculate with a non-hazardous, non-infectious acetobacter, and two to three weeks later, we pull out the material compared to once a year in the cotton industry. In the future, we're not going to use wine. We're going to value add by using the waste products, because if we can value add to that waste products, fermented fashion will become more environmentally friendly. And I truly believe that this will dramatically reduce the amount of water that's used to produce clothing. Here's me pulling out the material from a white wine vat and forming the garment. And we also believe that this will minimise the amount of industrialisation, looming, weaving and sewing that is presently being used in, in dressmaking techniques. Janika, wearing one of our red wine waistcoats, but we still had a problem with the material. When it dries, it cracks, brittle and falls off you. <laughs> You're walking down the streets of Perth, nice summer day, how embarrassment, you know. <laughs> Not only do our dresses <laughs> at smell, oh, they fall off. <laughs> to fix that problem, we've started a company here in Perth to try and use chemical and physical treatments to make the fabric more wearable. And we thought while we're here, why not try different beverages? <laughs> we're a beer drinking nation, aren't we? So let's see what happens. Here is our first beer dress worn by Sally, made from the bacterial fermentation of beer. Actually, we call this image four pillars because the three pillars on the left represent nearly 300 years of industrialization. And the one tree on the right represents what we hope will be the next 100 years of environmentalization. Because I'd rather breathe the gas that comes out of the one tree than the gases that come out of the three chimneys. And we hope that our beer dress and fermented fashion will drive our world from an industrial one to an environmental one. Oh, another thing, now the beer dress fabric is flexible when it's dry and doesn't smell. I'm gonna let you into a little secret, actually. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what beverage we use to make the material. It's what we do with that material after we harvest it. But later on, we thought to ourselves, let's try something else. Why not try some champagne? <laughs> Oops, actually, we're not allowed to call it champagne, are we? Viva la France, eh? <laughs> so sparkling couture it was. Can I please welcome to the stage Jasmine wearing our sparkling couture dress that was made earlier this year. Welcome, Jasmine. Cheers, Cheers. Guys, here's to all of us. We are all capable of using our imagination, stepping outside this dot and driving innovation through creativity. No matter what you do in your life, remember that creativity is as important as literacy and numeracy. And finally, we believe that fermented fashion will be the new sustainable and environmentally friendly way to clothe humanity. Cheers. <laughs>